The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory was located in New York City in the Ash Building. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory was owned by Max Blank and Isaac Harris. The factory mainly employed young immigrant women, mostly Italian and Jewish immigrants who were usually under the age of 30. The immigrants were not very learned. The factory mainly made shirtwaists, which were a common type of dress back in the 1910s. Those working conditions were just horrible. I had to get up at 6.40 in the morning to get there by 7.30. Doors were locked the entire time. Couldn't get out. You had one lunch break, 30 minutes. You didn't even start it on the pay. You had to work three hours overtime. Were supposed to end at six? Nope. Us youngsters didn't get out until nine. I only got a dollar and a half for a seven day week. Do you know how much time I put into that week? And you couldn't leave because I didn't know how to get a job because I couldn't speak English. And you work under bad conditions or start. So I chose bad conditions. Many women felt this way and were tired of the impressive conditions they worked under. They worked long hours and had little pay, but had no choice to leave. The factories were often crowded and there were many people crammed together. The factory employed 500 women only in the top few floors, and these floors were crammed with stuff. Many people in the public were also aware of these conditions that the immigrants worked under. There are many children employed in the factory who also worked the very long hours in bad conditions. 19-year-old Clara Lynn Lynch stood up in front of the International Ladies Garment Workers Union and demanded for a strike after factories pushed for longer hours and lower pay. Higher wages, shorter hours, pay for overtime. Higher wages, shorter hours, pay for overtime. On November 23, 1909, over 15,000 workers walked out. They demanded for a 20% pay raise, a 52-hour week, and pay for overtime. Smaller factories quickly agreed to the demands while bigger, larger factories banded together and refused to accept the demands. Many strikers were arrested and sentenced to labor camps. Managers of the factory attempted to hire strike breakers to break up the strike. The strike lasted through February 1910, at which point larger factories agreed to negotiate. They agreed to higher wages, shorter hours, and recognize the union. Other demands, such as unlocked doors and fire escapes, were not listened to. quickly. The doors were locked and the fire escapes didn't work, which prevented the women from escaping. The hoses and the water from the firefighters didn't reach the top floors, so many women perished. A fire. It was just a terrible day. The workshops are always super crowded, so the fire just spread quickly because of all the flammable material that's not ever cleared out. And the owners lock the doors every single day so us workers can't escape and steal their things. And the fire escapes, they didn't even reach the ground. And the firefighters with their ladders and water couldn't reach the top floors. So the girls on the top floors were stuck. And some, instead of burning to death, jumped out windows only to die. After the fire, there was pressure to make safer conditions. But even when the owners were fired, the conditions didn't change. They were just the same, or worse. The damage to the factory was great. The cloth and all the trash on the floor easily burned up. Many women died. 146 out of the 500 working died that day. The youngest woman who died was 14 and the oldest was 40. Many relatives of the family were distraught and didn't know what to do. There was 
was much public opposition to the fire. There were protests created to help with improved conditions for the workers, and many organizations were formed to help with the relief work. The owners of the Triangle Street Waste Factory were fired, but later when investigators came to the same factory years later, conditions didn't improve much. After the shirtwaist factory fire, it is still not forgotten. There was a huge remembrance movement where all the women who died in the fire were given memorials. In response to the fire, the New York governor created the Factory Investing Commission. Workers' rights advocates pushed through new laws and created the State Department of Labor to enforce the 25 new laws. These laws and the Department of Labor are still in effect today.